and stranger a traveling through this world of war but there's no sickness toil more danger in that fair land to which I go I'm going there to see my father I'm going there no more to roam I'm just a going over Jordan I'm just a going over home I know dark clouds will gather round me I know my way is rough and steep yet beauteous fields lie just before me where God's redeemed their vigils keep I'm going there to see my mother she said she'd meet me when I come I'm just a going over Jordan I'm just a going over home. I'm just a poor wayfarer and stranger. I'm just a going over. Well, hello, Abiding Presence, and welcome to worship. At this time, I would invite you to join me in the confession and forgiveness. And blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy on us. Our sin is heavy, and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined, and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the Spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace by the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God. Your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your Son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace. All are welcome. Our mission is to seek God and serve others. On Tuesday morning, staff came up to the church for warmth and water, only to discover burst pipes in both buildings. And after two days of cleanup and evaluating the damage, workers are here today to restore this place of grace. And as you can see and hear, the organ works are sound and cameras are okay and no one was hurt. Sheetrock can be repaired and carpet can be installed and furniture's can be uh, replaced, but for certain, God is with us. In exile during this pandemic, in the flood, and in the winter storm, and God promises to be with us these 40 days and beyond. Thank you to those who were able to come up and help out with the cleanup effort, and also thank you for all the numerous prayers that were offered. We know that there's going to be work to be done in the weeks ahead, so just be on the lookout for any opportunity to serve others as we recover from this unfortunate event. But we're really more concerned with you. How are you holding up? Do you have any needs? Because there are many in the wings that are waiting to support you. So if you have any need as the snow melts, please contact the church so we might serve you. Today is the first Sunday in Lent. I invite you to join us each Wednesday evening for our midweek Lenten live stream worship service. This year, we're talking about community of grace. You have received in your uh, mail the Lenten Daily Devotional. Let's all read it together as a community. And I hope that you have your own Lent jar to collect spare change for the mission partner of your choice over the next 40 days. At Easter, we're going to collect all this change, total up the coins, and share with the mission partner, mission partner of your choosing. Let your change change a life. On February, uh, on February 21st, on Sunday, the Bible scholars are going to be meeting up at church for a day of games and fun. If you're a third through fifth grader, come on to, out to the outdoor chapel on Sunday at 1230 and meet Mike Sayanis for an outdoor adventure. It's going to be a lot of fun. And now let us turn our hearts and minds to the hearing of God's word. A reading from Genesis chapter 9, beginning at verse 8. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds. And it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. 
When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all the flesh that is on the earth. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. A reading from 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning at verse 18. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Hey friends, I'm at the baptismal font today uh, because we're going to talk a little bit about water. Have you been seeing any water around your house lately? I know that we did. Our whole backyard was filled with snow, and it was so beautiful. But did you know that sometimes that beautiful stuff can also be somewhat destructive? We had a pipe burst at the church, and water was all inside this building. It was amazing to see, and we had to work to clean it all up. Sometimes water can be pretty destructive. In the story that we heard earlier about Noah, God said, I'm never going to do this again. I'm never going to flood the world again. Because they were on the water for 40 days and 40 nights, and it was pretty destructive. And we hear a lot of stories about water in the Bible. And a lot of times we come over here to the baptismal font to talk about water because it's right in the middle of our baptism. We hear stories about Noah when the water came down and was flooding the earth. We hear stories about Moses, how Moses was able to part the water so they could walk across to dry land to go into the wilderness. We hear stories about John the Baptist, who was baptizing people, preparing them for Jesus. And today we're going to hear the story about Jesus getting baptized. And he gets taken down into the water, and then he comes up out of the water, and the dove descends on him and God's voice is heard saying, this is my beloved son. And the same thing happens for us right here at this font. We are reminded that we are with Jesus whenever we're baptized, that we are claimed too, and that we are called beloved as well. And so the next time that you have some water around you, I want you to go ahead and take your fingers and dip it into that water and make a sign of the cross on your forehead. And let's remember that we are children of God because this water gives life. Amen. And now let's all sing together the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. 
and the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Have you ever looked at the ceiling of the sanctuary in here? It looks quite like the bottom of a ship. The cross beams, the shape. It's almost looking like we're looking underneath at the bottom of a ship. This is not a happy accident or a coincidence either. When the word of Jesus began to spread throughout the land and, and all these letters were starting to pass back and forth from one community to the other, those early Christians used the ark, Noah's ark, as the picture of a church, a place for them to gather safely in the presence of the holy, a place of comfort from the stress and trials of the world, a place to call home while they're on life's journey. In fact, the main body of the sanctuary, when we're sitting in here, this is called the nave, which is Latin for ship, a sailing ship. And from this ship, we hear about Jesus calming those stormy waters. We witness people fishing with nets just bursting at the seams filled, filled with fish. We hear about the parting waters leading the Israelites safely into the wilderness after, for 40 years. And we hear about the rainbow, the covenant that God made after 40 days of the flood. So whenever this ark began to flood, people came together to part those waters. And people came together to share equipment and time, and your overwhelming generosity was bursting at the seams. And God's people came together to offer prayers, calming our stormy hearts and minds. And from you, God's rainbow could be seen, such vivid and splendid colors shining through. We're, we're walking into Lent, the 40 days of Lent, and we're doing so with a flood. And I'm not talking about a flooded church or a flooded day school. I'm talking about a flood of hope, a flood of grace, a flood of divine mercy, a flood of assurance that God, who was with Noah and Moses and the early church, is with us now. And that God will see us through these 40 days of Lent and beyond. Let us pray. Gracious God, open our hearts and minds to receive your word. Grant us courage and strength in the days ahead to respond faithfully to the promises we make with each other in our baptism. Let the cross on our foreheads remind us that you have called us and claimed us as your beloved. Amen. In our Old Testament lesson, we hear God speaking to Noah and his sons. And he tells them, I'm establishing my covenant with you, your descendants, and every living creature that this will never happen again. And the sign of this covenant will be the rainbow. Now, this isn't the last time that God shares a covenant with us. Over the next five weeks, we're going to be discussing some of the covenants that God has made with us, uh, like with Abraham and Sarah to be descendants, the number of the stars, with Moses and the Ten Commandments, and, and even the new covenant that Jeremiah prophesizes about. But the thing is, a covenant is one-sided. It's one party making a promise to another, and the other has no part in it whatsoever. God is making a promise, a covenant with us. It's not us making a promise to God. God promises to never flood the earth like before. And the rainbow, our scripture tells us, is for God to remember this everlasting covenant. There was this, uh, this story I remember from seminary about a professor who was teaching a class. And he goes up to the chalkboard and draws a big arrow pointing straight down. And he looks at his seminarians, and in all of their theological prowess, he says, what does this mean? 
And they begin to wrestle with all kinds of theories, things like, when, oh, this means you're grounded in the spirit, or it's, it's hell, or it's earth, or it's burial, or it's death. And the professor looked at the class and said, this arrow pointing down, this is God's action. God comes down to us. We do not go up to God. God comes down to us. God came down to walk with our first parents. God came down to Abraham and Sarah. God came down to Moses. God comes down to us through Jesus Christ, who establishes the most profound covenant with us, forgiveness of sin and everlasting life. We don't have the ability to go up to God. We don't have the ability to make a covenant or a promise with God. We are an image of God, a splendid rainbow-like colorful array of God's vast image, but we aren't able to make such a promise, such a covenant with God. Our brokenness, our sin, our humanness, it makes it quite impossible for us to do so. However, we do have the ability to make promises and covenants with each other, and we do so in our baptism. We say things like to live among God's faithful people, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, serving all and striving for justice and peace in all the world. The difference is that we're promising to do this for others, expecting nothing in return, just showing others the God of the covenant through everything that we say and everything that we do. And these promises that we make are not some happy accident or coincidence either. This is what Jesus shows us. Take a look at that gospel lesson we just had. Jesus is baptized and the Spirit descends upon Christ like a dove. And God claims Jesus, my beloved. And then Jesus is thrust out into the wilderness filled with these wild beasts and he's tempted by Satan. And when he emerges from this, he goes on to proclaim the good news of God in his words and in his deeds. In our baptism, we too are flooded with the Holy Spirit, and we emerge from those baptismal waters claimed as beloved children of God, and we mark ourselves, like we just did on Ash Wednesday, sealed with the cross of Christ forever, knowing that it's through Christ that we are forgiven, that we are saved. It's through Christ that we have the gift of eternal life. And then we are thrust out into the wilderness of daily life. And it's felt a little wild lately. People with electricity failing and, 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 and water turned off and pipes are bursting and lines are long and emotions are high and shelves are empty. We found a few of those wild beasts, didn't we? A few of the temptations. But I also see amazing opportunities to flood the world with the good news of Christ, with our words and our deeds. I can't tell you how many calls I've received just over the past few days from this community of grace willing to help. How can I deliver food? Does anybody need a room? I have, I have clean water. I got a truck. You are proclaiming the good news of Christ in your words and deeds. I've witnessed this community of grace show up in the middle of snow and ice to care for this flooded ark. Dragging wet carpet outdoors, providing towels and wet backs, wet backs and, and push brooms and squeegees. You are proclaiming the good news of Christ in your words and deeds. And I felt the prayers of this community of grace for those that are struggling without heat, those that are snowed in, those that are alone with any need. You are proclaiming the good news of Christ in word and deed. Over these 40 days, as we continue to discover the covenants that God makes with us, we're called to live into the covenant that we make in our baptism. And it's not to God. It's not to receive salvation, not to receive forgiveness, because these things have been already given to us. These promises are a response, a watery reflection of the covenant that God made with us in Christ. These promises are for others so they may experience the good news of Christ in everything that we say and in everything that we do. Blessings to you. Amen.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the earth's creatures from destruction. Empower the work of biologists, conservationists, and science educators. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world that they may maintain justice for the lowly. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Even in the wilderness, you are with us. Walk alongside those who are currently suffering in our communities due to the most recent snowstorms. Provide for those without power and water and guide those who are now navigating repairs due to damage, especially our APLC community. Give healing and strength to all who suffer. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the covenant of baptism, you claim us as beloved children. Nurture us in our baptismal identity and teach us to live within it for the sake of others. Strengthen this congregation's ministries of care and concern, especially those that minister to the homeless. We offer prayers for the Scarlet family in the loss of Lisa's father, Alan, the Tinkin family, Tawn and Jay Miner's granddaughter, Sarah, and those we now name aloud or silently in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died trusting in your faithfulness. Bring us with them to the fullness of your reign. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please, wherever you're at today, take a minute to share Christ's peace with one another. Maybe send a text to someone or reach out on social media, but we ask that you share God's peace today with one another. God, peace be with you. Our God has made covenants with us from the beginning of time. God has called us and claimed us in the waters of baptism. This is where we take on God's character, promising to love and serve others the same way God has shown us through Christ. One of the acts of serving is sharing our resources. In the uncertain days ahead, as we evaluate damage to the church and day school, we invite you to consider the gifts you share with abiding presence. Thank you for your continued generosity. Mm -hmm. 
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have blessed us with our bodies, our minds, our hearts, our communities, and the resources of this earth. Lead us and guide us to use these gifts in accordance with your will, for the sake of the one who is with us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into the darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. Send forth your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. For your word of life, O God. We give you thanks and praise. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen.
Go in peace. Share the good news.